Tina, Tracy, hello. Hello. Hi, Simon. Hello, hello to everyone else as well uh, watching and listening. Uh, you're all on mute and your camera's off, so if you're uh, doing the tea or um, doing the ironing, that's quite alright. We can't see you, um, but you can you can listen in and hear us. Um, just to let everybody know as well that the um, uh, this has been recorded, so um, although we can't see you or can't hear you, um, just to let you know that that is the case. Um, so welcome to the to the video. Welcome to the call. Uh, Tina, you're great. You've helped us in an awful lot, as you have too, Tracy. Um, Tina, you've, you've got a, a, a child with an allergy um, and it's really helpful for us to be able to get that perspective in everything that we do and uh, you've both worked extremely hard and um, contributed significantly to the Safer Schools programme. Um, but Tina, tell us a little, little bit about you. So I am a parent volunteer for Anaphylaxis UK. Um, it's very, very close to my heart. I, so I'm a mother of a child with um, severe life-threatening nut allergies. Um, and yes, it's been a bit of a challenge, um, you know, ever since we found out he had allergies. Um, but I found that the support of Anaphylaxis UK um, has really helped um, us throughout the years. So, yeah, I'm so delighted to be, you know, a part of this venture. Um, Brilliant. Continue. Yeah, yeah no, it's great and it's great great to have you along this evening as well. And, and Tracy, um, equally uh, enormously helpful to us in uh, developing the materials for schools, um, both for teachers and for the parents. You're a, you're a head teacher, so you're you're in the thick of it um, and you're also a, a, an educational ambassador of ours. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, your your kind of involvement. Thanks, Simon. My involvement started a bit like Tina's um, when my son was diagnosed with um, severe life threatening nut allergy. Um, and he's now managed to reach the grand old age of very nearly 16. Um, and so we've done primary school and secondary school. But actually, being that, um, being mum, but also being a head teacher has given me that unique position and um, I've been you know really happy to work with Anaphylaxis UK just to to bring that to the benefit for the benefit of everybody else um because it's not easy is it doing it by yourself oh, absolutely right absolutely right so um you've both prepared a, a few slides for us as well to kind of guide us through this conversation um now I I'm going to try my best to share my screen and let people in and um, multitask so it might go wrong. So let's give it a whirl. Right, I'm going to um, get the slides on. Right, yeah. how's that? Perfect. So you just need to start the slideshow and then we're away. Yeah. There we go. And I can see you. In, I can see you down in the corner, but I can't um, see it if anybody's asking questions or hands up or anybody else is coming, but you give me a nod when you want to move the slide on. Okie dokie. And if, if people do want to ask questions, obviously we're happy to, to answer those. Um, it may be worth waiting until the end. Um, and then, I don't know how, Zoom and Teams both have that nice little put your hand up function, so it then pops up on, on our screen, and that would be quite handy if people could use that. Um, but yeah, thanks, Simon. So um, welcome to everybody that's joined us tonight. Obviously, you've got um, probably vested interest in, in trying to find out about uh, navigating secondary school. And it might be that you're just thinking about applying for September 23 entry, or it might be that actually you've just started in year seven, or you might be planning ahead a little bit further than that. So hopefully we will be able to help you at whatever stage you are on your journey. Um, we have considered this in four key areas. So first of all, um, thinking about um, those, what can we do? What, what, what responsibilities do we as parents have? What responsibilities do schools have and, um, and our children? And 
we've also tried to think of some um, questions that you might ask um, when choosing a secondary school and then thinking about how that transition could be nice and smooth because it's it's a little bit daunting anyway moving into secondary school from primary school because you don't know how it how it works and then um, lastly we'll be thinking about ongoing management after you've actually moved into year seven and you've in the done the first four weeks and things are settling down a little bit and all of a sudden your child has turned from from somebody that needed you massively in primary school and have they've just grown their independent wings um, very very quickly in year seven so that's kind of our framework for tonight um, Simon could you move us on to the next slide please um, so the things that we thought were really key to remember is that every primary school works differently and every secondary school works different, differently. There are um, common standards in what Ofsted expect in how medical conditions at school need to be managed. Um, there are common things that the schools have to have a behaviour policy which has to be published, they have to have a complaints policy which has to be published. So there are lots of common things, but the day-to-day -day organisation and running of the school is down to the head teacher or possibly multi-academy trust. And I think when we were putting this together, we talked a lot about the fact that um, we recognise that the way that primary schools are much more feel much more like an extension of your family, whereas secondary schools are so much bigger and actually they just do have to work differently. They can't work in the same way. And so things that might have worked at primary school um, might not work or even be an option at secondary school because it's just there's just simply too many um, children and staff to be able to, to, to do it in the same way. Crucially, we think that that positive open communication is the key and it's great when parents are proactive with school and actually ask those, I wonder if I can help you. I wonder is a brilliant sentence starter because it's not confrontational. Um, and we were talking before sort of the call started just about actually how life is different when you've got knowledge of allergy than when you have no knowledge of allergy whatsoever. Um, and it's it, it, people don't necessarily want are trying to do the wrong thing um, sometimes it just comes from that ignorance and so that I wonder if I can um, is it possible that I've done it this week with my own child not my allergic child but my younger child I've just emailed the DT teach the cooking teacher and just said they're doing this recipe actually my son my other son is allergic to this and he's going to want to eat these when they come home so is it possible that i can make this um adaptation to the menu and on a uh, menu on the recipe and, and on this recipe that he's going to do the week after i actually don't know how to adapt it so can you help me with that one um and i got a really positive response back from her so it's it wasn't even about um just thinking about um my allergic son it was making it work for my allergic son, even though my non-allergic son was the one do, that was doing the cooking. And, and all of those things that schools won't necessarily think about unless they have got that direct experience for themselves. So having that positive open communication is really, really important. And the thing that I've learned very much as my uh, son has grown through secondary school is that now they really are going to be um, saying what they want and what they don't want and they will be you, you need to get them on board because otherwise it's just a bit of a car crash I think <laughs> well, it certainly has been in my house in trying to navigate teenage years and uh, what I think is safe and reasonable and what he thinks is safe and reasonable so starting out by um, actually are you really still happy to have your EpiPens or your auto injectors in that bag or do we need to find something that's a little bit more grown up isn't so different as what it, uh, you had at primary school because for my son fitting in and being the same was really key so actually making sure that they're included in all of the discussions and decisions around 
transition and what it's going to look and feel like for them. It's really, really important. Um, OK, Simon, thank you. Okay, perfect. So so we, we thought about actually that first part of talking to your child's primary school and and that's actually just to meet with the primary school and to actually start unpicking what is it that school are doing currently how is that allergy being managed i know that's you know we think we know but in practice actually how is it being managed and what do the primary school know about the secondary school that they know because their educators talking to educators rather than parents looking in um, and visiting from the outside. So I think I'm picking the brains of the primary school about the secondary school is a really good place to start. Um, and it, it may well be that the primary school say, actually, I think this will still work and and actually this might need to change. And that would be a helpful conversation to have with your child's teachers um, at this point in the year as you're looking ahead to that secondary school. Okay. Thanks, Simon. So we also talked about um, the, the healthcare professional role within all of this. And one of the things that we did um, was go back to Allergy Clinic because he was on a five year recall. And I just said, look, can, can I just have an appointment ahead of starting um, secondary school so that once again, it's not mum telling him about the auto injector, it's you telling him about the auto injector and about actually how he needs to take a bit more responsibility or does he remember what that reaction feels like and just making sure that um, everything that needs to be reviewed is reviewed in so you've got good information to hand over to the secondary school and it may well be that they do they they have some additional information that they can share with you or your child in the same way that my allergy clinic mine not mine my son's allergy clinic um did did with him um yeah, definitely. I think we've put on there about making sure that your child is confident in administering their own adrenaline auto injectors and um, all of the uh, brands do trainer pens, which are free to to get. You just have to go onto their website and order them. And so we've got a stash of those knocking around at home so that that not only my uh, my son could have a go at using those again, but also this very small group of friends that he was going with from primary school in the summer holidays ahead of um, actually making that transition. And we we had a practice happy pen party around our house with cake and football um, and have a go at stabbing each other with, an, with a dummy auto injector. And that just gave the other parents and the other lads um, a bit of confidence as well. So making sure that you're confident is really, really important. Tracy, what we'll do is we'll also put a link on to our website, um, both to the page where it's got the uh, manufacturer's um, web pages so you can uh, order these training pens. But I've just done uh, an interview with uh, a, a GP, Dr Matt Doyle, who has a, a special interest in allergies and uh, he showed me how to use all three of the pens, when to use them, and it was a very informative little video and also producing videos, individual videos on how to each uh, to use each of those pens. So similarly, I'll put um, links in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the magic way that you can do on these videos. And um, certainly if anybody's watching it on YouTube, they'll, in the YouTube channel, there'll be a video on uh, how to use your uh, auto uh, injector. Oh, that sounds absolutely brilliant. Um, I thoroughly recommend them. Um, and then the other thing that we felt that was really important is for you, it's always easier if you go informed about rights and responsibilities, because um, whilst schools do have a responsibility and duty of care for the children, actually there are a lot of responsibilities for parents. And so making sure that you're going in with the right expectations of a school um, 
is also really, really important. And I think there is later on um, some links to some information about what those rights and responsibilities are. So there is a, a government document that talks about um, keeping children's uh, supporting children with medical conditions in school. Um, and that sets out everybody's uh, responsibilities and that's very easily available with a quick Google. Um, and there are a couple of other organisations that the Anaphylaxis UK work with around making sure that the right information is in schools. So it's it's easy enough to find out what those responsibilities are. And similarly, Trey, I can kick, I, I, I completely and uh, unashamedly plug our own website and the information we've got. Uh, again, I'll put a link on the um, uh, on this video as well, two of the education pages. So there's loads of stuff for schools, but just what is relevant for parents as well on there. So I'm going to hand over to Tina now. Right, so the kind of questions to ask when we're choosing a secondary school. Um, as a parent, it's I, I feel like it's so important that we take that proactive step. I don't, this is something that I did um, when my son started secondary school a couple of years ago. Um, looking at how does a school manage allergies, for example, anaphylaxis and treatment. It's so important for us to find out how, you know, what kind of procedures they have in place. Does the school understand, you know, the all seriousness of allergies? What are their procedures if, you know, if a child goes into anaphylactic, anaphylactic shock? Um, and what kind of treatment do they offer? Um, I think it's, it's quite imperative as a parent to know how they would manage an emergency situation. Um, I think Simon, if you could. Next one. The next point. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Would it be easier if you want me to pull them Absolutely. all up? There was yeah, that that would be Thank you. Very helpful. Yeah. So it's it's important to know what procedures they currently have in place. Um, when we're looking at the policies, for example, we need to, or should I say, before even when it comes to shortlisting schools, I think it's quite important for us to to find out what the school's policies are. And they will differ from one school to another. Um, and in there, again, it'll detail, you know, how the school does manage allergy, uh, allergies and anaphylaxis. Um, so definitely um, worth asking that question. Um, meetings arranged with staff and children, I think, was quite important for me because I felt like it would give my child confidence, um, you know, having the conversation with you know a teacher um, or other you know first aid um, staff etc um, as to where they could go if they felt like you know if they needed help or if they needed extra support um, and can they have a discussion about you know how their school life would would be you know whilst dealing with with allergies etc and how they can manage them safely um, Tina, can I, uh, Tina yeah. I, I, can't, I can't resist myself in, in, in all of these plugs and, and I don't want this to run into a constant uh, advert for what we produce, but um, you, you've worked hard and uh, uh, we've all collectively produced this uh, uh, Safer Schools programme, um, a training programme for not just individual teachers, but adopting this whole school approach. So similarly, you know, the opportunities for schools now to get some easy to um, access training. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 very, very, you know, it's, it's, it's five pounds, six pounds um, to do it. So it's not cost prohibitive uh, and it it's great. You know, it's it's very comprehensive. Um, and I know we've 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 um, well, it's fact, I, I can't remember the exact number now, but with, with thousands and thousands and thousands of staff have done it over the uh, over the last few weeks since the beginning of the term. So it's really encouraging to see so many schools taking part in the training. So, you know, if anybody is uh, you know, talking to a, a school and they've not done any training or they don't know where to start, well, you know, here we are. <laughs> you know, come to us. Absolutely. And I think more and more schools, you know, the more 
I think it's down to us parents really to speak to our schools and yeah. introduce them to Anaphylaxis UK. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely of right. Course. Yeah, well, we're here to help. So I'll, I'll do it again. I'll I'll, uh, I'll not do all these individually. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Right, so yeah, some other things um, to think about really. Um, will will my child be encouraged to carry their, uh, their adrenaline pens on them where possible? Um, so it's very different to a primary school where we're very much used to the schools looking after our children, looking after the EpiPens, et cetera. You know, now is the time, especially, you know, going into secondary school that the children have to really think about, you know, taking some responsibility. And as a parent, that was quite hard for me to even, you know, comprehend that my 12 year old son was going to be in charge of his life saving equipment on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's, you know, children are quite resilient. They're, you know, I think they're stronger than we think at times and they, they take it on. And, and I guess the more um, responsible they become, the more educated they become, um, the better it is really, um, you know, they take that responsibility on themselves. Um, in terms of sports, etc. obviously, again, it's very different in a secondary school. Um, you know, schools are a lot larger, you know, they can be doing PE outside, etc. So that was a concern for me. You know, what, what does my child do with his pens? Do they go out with him? Does the teacher look after them? So it's definitely a question worth asking. Um, I did ask every single school um, a lot of these questions and also, you know, asked many schools whether they chose to purchase um, any adrenaline pens as well. Um, that, you know, and when, and when I heard a school say that, yes, they have, you know, one in, you know, they have one um, or they have two, it gave me a lot more um, comfort <laughs> and a sense of relief, really, that, you know, they really are taking um, allergies and anaphylaxis very seriously. So that helped me to shortlist schools. Um, Tina, did, did you not feel a little bit disappointed that it sounds as though you, you talked to some schools that didn't have any uh, spare pens? Absolutely. Um, I think I was shocked more than anything else. Like, yeah. why is no one, you know, why isn't everyone taking allergies as seriously as I am? But yes, I did speak to a few schools um, who didn't really have a reason as to why they didn't have any spare AAIs um, and, and they didn't really have much more information and, and, and that for me was you know an indicator of absolute no-go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean there's I, no I, reason for them not to have them. There, there isn't indeed. Um, I did though however speak to one person, uh, one staff member who actually you know said that it was you know didn't didn't really um, help with their budget so <laughs> Well, I mean, but again, I think this is the problem um, is that it's about having a good reason for not having them. Um, schools struggle also to get them replaced and they're not prescription price. No. They are £50 a go for things that hopefully are just going to sit on the shelf all year and not be used. Um, and so I think when you are, if schools say no, they don't have them, it's finding out their reasons for that, because the worst thing would be for them to sit on the shelves and then for them to be out of date, isn't it? Or something like that. Yeah, because, or parents think that they've got them, but because of the shortages, they haven't got them. Mm -hmm. And so actually there are reasons. And there was a time where actually as a school, I was told, no, you can't have them at the moment because we need to fulfill children's prescriptions um, children and young people so it's unpicking the reasons why like you said you came across schools that just yeah you know well why do we need to have those yeah. so that's a very different response than somebody being able to say well actually yeah we'd really like to be able to hold those but x y and z these are the reasons why we haven't and and actually we plan to have them again in the future when we can is is thinking it's that kind of response i would say is is the important thing there and it's also knowing how to use them a little bit like your, uh, you know, that your your party and educating the children how to use them. It's it's that you know anybody around those that need to use them at some point, potentially needs to be shown how to use them properly. Absolutely. Shall I move on? Uh, yeah. Oh, so that hasn't moved on. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. Did you just want to um, talk about the canteen, Tina, before we move on? To yes, this bit? I can do. Um, I think it's probably worth um, asking staff members, or as I did, um, I actually asked to meet the um, the manager, the cook, the managers of the kitchen within the school, um, just to see, you know, how do they label food items? You know, are children able to see which, um, you know, food items are safe for them to eat? Are they going to be clearly labelled? Do they have someone that they can speak to within um, the canteen if they have, you know, any queries or any issues at all? That was quite important for me. And, and to be fair, actually, a lot of the canteens that I walked around um, on the open days and, and the staff that I spoke to said that they did label food items um, for children with allergies, um, with the correct allergens. And yeah, so it, th that really wasn't an issue um, when I was looking around schools, to be to be fair. Oh, that's really good. That's um, and I, I think in many respects, because um, secondary schools do a little bit more of the pre-packed and so there it's it, it, it then falls under the the new Natasha's law um, that they've had to review their processes for sort of um, labelling allergens. Mm. Absolutely. Oops. Hang on. Right, we're <laughs> gone too far. There we are. Too far. There we go. So um is it back to me or I think it might be back to me. So thinking about the transition from primary school into secondary school. So actually we're we're finishing off term six. We've got the summer holidays um, before we get to the summer holidays. You know, you, you would have had your induction induction. It's important now to be thinking of um, have you had a meeting? I know when you looked around, you'd have asked all the questions that Tina said, but actually you've you've got the school of your choice and your child's going up for induction days. It's now time to actually be homing in on that, that school and making sure things are going to be right on day one in September. And so now saying, OK, right, let's have this meeting so that we know exactly what's happening. Um, how will all of my child's teachers over a fortnight know that my that, that my child has an allergy um, and making sure that you understand that and um, making sure that you've got that up to date signed allergy action plan and that's been sent across to the school. And making sure that, you know, if they've not had their training yet, when's that training? going to come in into being and actually pin them down for a date rather than just it or oh, we're going to do it in term one um actually because it then means that you can go back to them and say how was your training so not did you have your training but how was your training and can I help you um with any of the bits that you covered I've quite often said that to um my son's school so uh, I think Next slide, please, Simon. You know, in your conversations with the school, if they have a if they haven't got the AAIs already and they've agreed to buy them, has that been actioned? Um, there is a allergy risk assessment on this making school safer page of allergy um, anaphylax anaphylaxis UK which I um, wrote for my local authority and then shared with Anaphylaxis UK. So that's on their website and um, and that's a really good structure of conversation so that the school really can understand exactly what your child's needs are. I think it's really important for you to be reassured that the staff know where the, uh, where the child's AAIs were and making sure that catering arrangements and everything are all clear and all understood by everybody that needs to know. Um, and I found the form tutor to be a real um, rock um, in helping me navigate things to begin with in secondary school. Um, so in the same way that 
in primary school were used to a point of contact being the class teacher. Actually, the tutor was my conduit there. Um, that and I made really good friends with the uh, student receptionist who was looking after all of the the uh, the, med the medicines and secondary schools don't tend to do presents in quite the same way as primary schools do. But I did make sure that I sent her in um, a little Christmas present and um, we've stayed, you know, we, we've stayed working closely together all the way through. She was absolutely brilliant when my son first started. Um, OK, Simon, next slide, please. I think that, you know, once we get to this point in term seven, it's useful to touch base with the secondary school, with the tutor, with the person that's managing the, the allergies, with your child to actually see how things how things are working out and and actually how is your child feeling and, and are they happy and confident? And I think that's it's going back to making sure that they're really included in this now because they this is the next stage where we are preparing them for that independence growing into adulthood. Um, and as much as I want to keep him wrapped up in cotton wool, he's very much taller than me now and um, very much a young man. And so, you know, I'm lucky if he does anything that I ask him to at the moment. So I think it's important to, to just have those ongoing dialogues and um, and then things crop up along the way. And it's it's just approaching school and just saying um, this French trip that you're running, um, how is that going to be accessible for my child? Or, you know, my child would really like to go on this French day trip, but um, I'm a bit worried about him being let loose in the supermarket. How are we going to manage that allergy translation when he's going and buying what he thinks is a safe food in the UK? Um, because he's seen it by the label on the, the shelf in the supermarket. And those things will keep cropping up, um, but it's just approaching the school and just saying, I wonder if I can have a chat about, um, and that's, it, it will work really well. And I really do just say, try not to be confrontational, even when something has gone wrong, um, because I think you get a better response out of somebody if we can manage our, um, high emotions because something's gone wrong with that kind of um, non-confrontational approach. But if things don't get resolved, follow the complaints procedure. Every school has to publish on their website the complaints procedure. And if things are going wrong and you can't resolve it with that I wonder chat, actually then use the complaints procedure because that's the vehicle for you to get proper resolution on it. Um, so I can't, yeah, I see, I see, I've had it. Uh, I'm just going to go to social media and I'm just going to do this and I'm just going to do that. We still have to go back. So I'm going to go to Ofsted. Ofsted will say, have you followed the complaints procedure? So actually you save yourself a lot of um, stress if you just follow the complaints procedure um, and you will get your resolution that way. It's very, they are very thorough. But you also think as well, Tracy, that it, by kind of escalating it so quickly, it actually makes things worse because then the school doesn't necessarily learn, <laughs> the, the lessons aren't learned and, you know, in the future teachers are very reluctant then or anybody's in, in, within that school will be reluctant just to, you know, put their hands up and say, oops, OK, you know, we had a near miss there. Let's learn from that so it doesn't happen again, rather than, uh, you know, hiding it or or covering it up almost because they just don't want the complaint. Yeah, very so. much so. It is it is better. I think I've I've managed to get far more out of my son's school um, by working with them and suggesting that we, you know, review processes together. They love me. They love it when a head teacher comes to them and says, can we just have a look at? Yeah. <laughs> um, OK, so I think our key points from this evening, be, and I know I can see some people have got questions. Um, our key points are that every school does work differently. And so find out how they work put a little bit of as tina said go and ask go in with your set of questions that 
you want answers to and and I think Tina you had them written down didn't you so that you were able to ask them consistently to all of the schools um and then thinking about what works at primary school won't necessarily work or be an option at secondary school and having that positive open communication and involving the child in discussions. That's very important, isn't it? It's very important. I mean, TD, you mentioned it earlier on. I think we'll, there's some there's some links on the final slide here, but I think just in terms of speeding things along, I'll put those links on the um, on the video as well. So, but let me sh stop sharing the screen here and then we can start getting some of the. Uh, Simon, sorry to interrupt. Can you hear me? OK, because I think yes. I've frozen on screen. No, that's no, all right. You're back. You're back. You're back. Okay. Um, there's some, we, we're going to put the links up for the Safer School programme, uh, the training programme, um, as well as the supporting uh, pupils with medical conditions at school. Um, site, which is the government uh, website. I'll put those all on the video here, but and there are a few uh, questions or there are some hands up. But I'll tell you what, could, have you got, if you've got access to the chat, if you could write to the question in the chat, that would be very helpful. Um, but uh, you were en ending one of the comments you made there, Trace, about, you know, not just is every school different, um, but the, the difference between primary schools and secondary, secondary school is quite big. Yeah, so, you know, there's a lot to ask. There's a lot different for the, both the parent and the pupils themselves. There's a big change going on. And sometimes, I mean, Tina, in your experience as well, you know, if you're, you're asking the same question for every, to every school, Absolutely. And it's just having that list with you, you know, of everything, you know, that is important for you to find out. Um, and yeah, it's just just asking everything, you know, not feeling like, you know, this might be a silly question, etc. But just asking anything and everything, um, you know, to do with how how they do manage allergies so that you know that your child is going to be attending a safe school and it gives you that peace of mind when when they're there. Yes, absolutely. And, and Tracy, in your experience as well, I mean, but, but as, a, as a more of a teacher now, <clears throat> your colleagues, should they, you know, they come into the, to, to work it with you in the school, they may come from other other schools. What, I mean, what are their, their previous experiences compared to, you know, the, the way that you're running things now? Are they, you know, kind of surprised with that the, this is, you know, so, so important to you as that head teacher and it's different to them or is it becoming more of the norm? I think it's still very varied. Um, there are a lot of schools in my trust that we are um, educating and, and improving, but there are also a lot of schools who are really um, absolutely super amazing, spot on, and you couldn't want for better. And I think it very much does come down to personal experience and then just actually having somebody that's saying yeah okay we need to make this right for all of the children um and not just you know a, a couple i mean i think staff are starting slowly to become more aware of allergies simply because of the high profile um, deaths that there have been and the inquests that have followed after that. We've got okay, there's a couple of questions come in. Um, both are pretty similar and it relates to the the kind of journey to and from school. And um, I mean, it, it it really focuses around the importance of carrying your adrenaline pens at all time. You know, the ch the, the the child should have one. Um, or have two at all time. So on the bus, walking, however they're going to school, um, and wherever they are, you know, whether at home or in school or on the journey there, it must be with them at all time. So I think, um, you know, that that kind of answers both of those. Anything further that needs to be added, there, Tina, is you, you were saying how 
how uh, it's it's a kind of remodeling uh, your, your child's behavior to just get used to that absolutely i mean they're used to i think being um you know looked after all the time at school at home but you know when they go to secondary school it's so important for them to take on that independence um and you know the department of health guidelines etc they all say that children especially going to secondary school should be carrying their own AAIs on them, on their person at all times. You know, it's not something they can put to the side. It must be on them all the time. Um, my son actually carries um, his AAIs and an inhaler within like um, an actual uh, EpiPen bag, for example, um, that we bought online. Um, it's great. It carries all his meds. And he's able to take it with him, you know, to every class, etc. If he goes um, on the field and he's doing PE, again, he just takes it, takes it with him. So, yeah, always with him. Um, and then and that's quite important. And, you know, it is a little, it's difficult, I guess, difficult at the beginning because, you know, you're not, you're not used to it. Your child's not used to it, but you soon do. Um, and now he's in, you know, year eight and it, he doesn't know anything different. So it's mm. just a matter of time before you'll mm. get used to it. And um, somebody's asking about the age of administering a, uh, a an adrenaline um, pen, uh, with particular reference to being seven. But the uh, I presume yeah. the, the earlier, the better. Absolutely. So in in secondary schools, um, the staff still, everybody still does have responsibility to administer the auto injectors should they be needed. But I mean, it's the same the same anywhere in life um actually you may not be able to administer an auto injector yourself so there will need to be people around who um who who are able to administer those for the sick person um so there is an element of yes they might need to administer their own epipen and so they do need to know their signs and symptoms but that could happen when they're down the park as well as being in school. So it is about um, having that um, confidence with living with their own allergies in order to be able to manage themselves as a young person getting older because they are down the park, they are um, hanging out after school, they're going off around their mates' houses, um, they're going off into the next town to go to the cinema, depends where you live, it might be in the same town, um, but they, they're spreading their wings and they are going further. So the earlier that, as Simon said, that the children, young people are, are used to managing their own allergy, the better. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, that was great. Thank you very much. Very informative. It just whizzes by, but we've been uh, talking uh, for about three quarters of an hour and um, uh, I think we've covered an awful lot. Uh, it's been particularly helpful. Um, Tina, most grateful. Are there any kind of wrap ups? What are your kind of hot topic things to remember? Um, for me, would be just make that connection with the school and keep it going. You know, let them know who you are and who your child is. I found that very, very useful indeed. Um, and then, yeah, just spreading the word, educating people within the school, you know, friends, family, the wider community. That's the only way, you know, people are going to understand the seriousness of allergies. So, so doing all of that and, and just being confident, you know, it can be managed um, well if we're well informed. So, and, and yeah, just, just always staying alert. And, and another thing like Tracy had mentioned is, you know, just ensuring that your own child um, has the training. So should they ever be in a situation where they need to, um, you know, administer the AAI themselves, they can do so competently. That's all I was Tracy, saying. thank you, Tina. Tracy, as, as ever, grateful for your time. Thank you ever so much as well for um, take, uh, uh, talking with us um, uh, after work and busy day and into the evening. Uh, before we go, what what your top tips, your three key takeaway remembers? Your child is more capable than you give them credit for. <laughs> um, they, they really are. 
they really are. And um, I underestimated my son all the way through. Still do. He's awesome, actually. I don't have to check on him anymore. Schools want to get it right. Communicate with them. And I think that you'll have a you'll have a great time. But yeah, those are my takeaways. Trust your child, empower your child to communicate with school. Right. Thank you very much. So um, we'll top and tail and um, uh, get this video out in the next couple of days or so. Keep your eye on the YouTube channel. We've got plenty of videos as well uh, that might be helpful. Uh, I mentioned one around uh, how to use auto injectors, but there's a, a video I've uh, interviewed Professor Adam Fox, for example, on immunotherapy. Um, we've also broached the hot topic of nut free schools. Um, whether they're a good or a bad thing, uh, I'll let you watch the video uh, to decide what we uh, what the outcome of that is. Um, all on the Anaphylaxis UK um, YouTube channel. Um, until next time, both of you, thank you very much. Everybody that's uh, uh, listening in, thank you very much indeed. I'll see you soon. Thank Bye you. now.